Hey, hey, this is Mickey Rooney. Welcome back to the channel again. And as you see, we're going to do a spoiler review, as usual, for the episode 2 of Boba Fett. And now, the first one had some dislikes, but uh, this one, there's even more people disliking it. And not without reason, I gotta say, but overall my experience was positive. So we're gonna get uh, over through the episode and, and narration and everything, all the cookie, all the easter eggs, all the cookies, all for us. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, why not? Let's, uh, l let's give it a, a rating, but later on, right? So yeah, uh, first that I gotta say, and I addressed it on the first uh, episode review, is that uh, first it was too short, with 30-something minutes. This is 53, which is 48 of footage, and that's pretty badass. That's pretty badass. My expectations for length are definitely met on this, uh, on this episode, and I really wish they are consistent throughout the rest of the series, because we have five episodes to go, and I believe there is a lot of ground to cover, and we're kind of wasting time on this, uh, on these episodes with the flashbacks. But then again, I think it does it home their homework, right? The the homeworks are achieved uh, in a way. So let's get right on to it, right? This is my main Boba, my man Boba. And he's with his uh, Gamorreans and Fennec Shands on the background. She's blending in, but she's a sniper. A sniper's never at the forefront of the battle, right? You veterans know. I don't. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think Boba Fett has learned something from Mando. Which, in theory, this series is a spin-off. It's a power of helmet face. He... And this scene is speaking to the main antagonist, established the main antagonist of the series. Last time we, we didn't know who is sending these assassins, who is sending people against Boba. And now we know there are sorts of assassins and they're clear to operate on hot space, which in theory Mos Espa is not. So the mayor doesn't play around. The mayor doesn't play around, we discover it in this, uh, in this episode, it's played, actually voiced by uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez, uh, the showrunner, which is a, a good easter egg, it's the first of many. And, and he said, no, I didn't send this assassin, actually, I just killed this guy, so here's your, here's your bounty, bounty hunter. <laughs> he totally disrespects the man, but in the end he takes it, say, okay, I'm going to consider this your tribute. To me because I'm in charge right now so eventually he go back to the streets finding out oh who sent this assassin who sent this assassin and two hearts pop in hold on let me know first before that a good callback to Return of the Jedi which has happened a few probably not many years after this uh, before I mean and is a rancor. The, you remember Fennec Shand captured Allah, an assassin alive. They interrogate him and oh, he doesn't want to talk, he doesn't want to talk, he'll act so tough and everything. So, meet the, pit, meet the rancor pit. He drops down just like Luke did in Return of the Jedi. And the guy des is desperate. So, I'll talk, I'll talk, it was a hut, it was a mayor, it was the mayor. But it wasn't the mayor. Freaking lie. <laughs> and yeah, thing is, there's no rancor anymore. They even show mouse just fall off. <laughs> so it was a good call by guy. It was a fun little moment. But yeah, I don't know. You you realize he's learned the power of helmet face. And I like these two things, right? The these hot twins, Jabba's cousins are established as the main antagonist of the season, I think, for now. Let's see if they stick, right? And Hatsuka 
characteristically uh, anthropocentric in the m meaning that they speak their own language. They don't care for common, uh, common speech. They speak their own language, which Baba knows because Baba's in the inn. He's worked for one forever, so he knows. And of course, well, professional side and everything of mine, but. Uh, I like that uh, when characters speak languages, I appreciate the subtitles because this is important. This is something Spider-Man didn't do with Filipino. And uh, I believe there was another movie recently that did, uh, did about the same thing. When you're talking to an international audience or an audience that speaks English, put subtitles on. What's the deal, right? Put subtitles on. So this thing things, slugs, huts, don't come along. And they bring in a badass Wookiee. And this Wookiee, I didn't know him beforehand because I'm not that much into the expanded universe. But it turns out he's called Black Kersantan or something like that. Black Kersantan. Uh, racist Wookiee, expelled from his own tribe, uh, become a gladiator, that's why Bob has mentioned in the gladiator pits of Burr or whatever, maybe a call to Bill Burr, I don't know. <laughs> he loves like that. So yeah, this guy is badass. And according to the fans that know him from beforehand and everything, we're gonna see him also in the upcoming Kenobi show, maybe. I mean, the, the timing certainly matches. We'll see how it goes, but I'm excited to see what this guy can do. He certainly looks badass with a rifle that's probably bigger than me, <laughs> which is not hard and very small. <laughs> Anyways, this guy looks badass. And for now, it's all a standoff and everything, but the huts... They go back and say, uh, violence is bad for business, uh, sleep lightly. That's so very mafioso to say. It's like, call back, uh, again, thanks to Latino Slang for, for bringing that up in his uh, reviews and everything. Because uh, it's totally, it's totally a very mafioso thing to say. It's callbacks to Sopranos, to uh, Carlito's Way. It's, it's an underworld show, so of course it's a crime show in, in the stars, but uh, obviously <laughs> we're going to have fun with that. Oh, I'm running a little long today. Anyways, uh, this is the first 15 minutes of the show, of the episode, and later he goes to, you know, his back to tank, uh, where he dreams. And the flashback ran a little long this time because it was the whole rest of the episode. I mean, it's important because it retakes the story of what happened to him with the sand people and whatnot. Could have been done a little longer here on the present time. And that, and that I think that's the main source of displeasure for, the, for those that didn't like the episode that they're not much in the present, but they're a little focused on the past and not developing the action. But I think it's two stories running parallel for the moment. And you don't understand also what happened to Mandalorian and the, and the Tusken Raiders if you don't understand what happened, what happened with Boba before. So that's the thing. Yes, the, the thing is, uh, it takes too long. It's, it's like Boba of, of Arabia at this point. And, and there's a sequence, the training montage of the, of the Tusken Raiders. Uh, it's definitely there. I mean, it's, it's totally a callback to Lawrence of Arabia at this point, no? So yeah, you remember the bikers from last episode? My main man is out to get him. <laughs> he needs his bikes, basically. Uh, the Tuscan Raiders got um, systematically meet with a train from the Pike Syndicate, which is like the old Western train. They're shooting buffaloes and Indians. 
or Native Americans, if you want to be politically correct. I don't mind. It's not my native language. <laughs> I just speak it. Uh, so this guy said, the only way I'm going to get back at these people at the Pikes is if I, if I get some speeders and these Nikto idiots actually get them. They go to uh, Toshin Station, I believe it's called, yeah, Toshin Station, which is a callback to a deleted scene in the first movie. Actually, two of the characters appear, and they're supposed to be Luke's friends. So that's pretty badass, I say. That's pretty cool, but to be a badass, you gotta be my man, Boba, here. <laughs> he comes in, he beats the little shit out of everyone in the room, and he gets his, their speeders, which is cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, which we... Actually, I am not sure. But I think it's the first time we see one of the Pikes here without their mask. Their character is still shown with, uh, with their mask. So they, they stand like a big uh, Western reminiscent uh, scene of the, high, of the heist of a train. And they get the Pikes. They get... Uh, they get their, their spice, which is uh, illegal and very valuable. They get water, of course, which is uh, Tuscan Raiders need the most. It's something interesting. It's the space western. That's why I liked it so much. I like this episode so much. Because it's not just the standoff in the present time. Yeah, that's now. But that was back then. So, that's pretty interesting. I maybe could have done without the scene of the lizard and Boba getting high like a trip, like Joey Diaz was on the tribe. But it serves a purpose in the end, because he gets the wood to do his gaffy stick and everything. So, okay. That was called in for. And what I absolutely loved was the ending. Like Boba getting his uh, the black suit where we s uh, we see also in the Mandalorian at first the first time we see him on Titan with uh, Fennec Shand and uh, and uh, I was I was said the Wookiee the Tuscan Hacker the Tuscan Hacker is Tamora Morrison just enjoying himself at this point I'm gonna make up a choreography huh? you're gonna love it. <laughs> That's New Zealand accent, by the way. <laughs> you, can imagine, you, you remember uh, Cork from from the Avengers and so. <laughs> I'm gonna make a revolution. <laughs> He's making his revolution in the end because this, this is so badass. Is Boba been totally embraced by the tribe as an equal at this point as a member of the tribe. I like he doesn't subvert the authority of the chief or... Uh, there's two important people in this tribe. It's the boss of the tribe, wears red and such, and the lady that keeps beating his ass off, literally, because she's the, like the gaffy stick expert, the hand-to-hand -hand combat expert. And she's got very good scenes in the, in the train heist, too. So you're going to love that if you haven't seen it. Absolutely, yeah, for me, it's a, I was torn between a lesser score or an 8 of 10. I'd say, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Apparently, we're not in a rush to, to get there, which is <laughs> significant. But all in all, I'm, I'm pretty confident the show is doing really good. Uh, haters gonna hate. <laughs> No, but they, they have reason. They have reason. Let's be fair, they have reason. I don't give it a 10 because there is reasons, in, in my opinion. Some people think that it falls flat and all, but you're getting the origin story within the, the whole show. It's, it's saving you a show, people, so let's, let's be grateful. <laughs> no, in the end, in the end I think uh, The Book of Boba Fett is... Oh, there we go. The Book of Boba Fett is doing fine. Um, we'll see. Next episode, by force, has to be more present, focused, but we'll see how it goes. And I would like more reasoning as to why he needs to be in the back to ten so much. We have a hint because of the 
of the Salak, but we don't get a proper explanation. And uh, remember, show business is show, don't tell. So that's pretty much it for me in this review. Like if you, please pr hit the like button if you did. Please subscribe if you haven't, because, well, I'm trying to do my best here. I'm just a poor YouTuber finding his way in the galaxy. <laughs> and I guess I'll see you later. Let's enjoy, let's enjoy the rest of the show, and I'll be catching you later. See you.